Dr. Fizz here with Theoretical Physics, and as Richard Feynman once said, this is our jewel, the Euler's formula, which we want to derive. Now, the Euler's formula will relate five very important numbers in mathematics. One, zero, the additive identity element in the group of integers. If you take any integer and add it to zero, you get the same thing back. That's our identity element for ad under addition. And one, the multiplicative identity element for the group of non-zero rational numbers. And this one times any of the ratios uh, that you can think of will get back the same ratio. Then we have i, the imaginary number. We have pi, the ratio of the circumference of a circle to the diameter of a circle, and e, the natural base. So two of these involve groups. One here involves imaginary number and one involves the circle and the natural base. It's amazing that these are all related. And we will give a formula that relates all those in our next section. But first we want to uh, derive the Euler formula. And the way to derive the Euler formula, or one way to do it, is to consider the circle. And in this circle here we have one along the x-axis marked off. We have plus i along the y-axis, so it's complex plane. We have minus 1 and minus i. And we have taken a line from the origin up to some arbitrary point along the circumference and labeled this angle theta. And we call z the point that we are looking at. Now z is cosine of theta, that's along your x direction, and it's going to be i sine of theta as we go in the imaginary axis direction. You can think of this uh, by checking uh, at zero. If you have zero, cosine zero is one, sine zero is zero, so z would be one. And if you're at 90 degrees, then the cosine would be zero, and the sine would be one, and you would get i. So you can recover these four specific points by putting in the angles for those cases. Now we take the derivative of z with respect to theta and watch what happens. The derivative of the cosine gives minus the sine and the derivative of the sine gives the cosine. And if you look carefully at this, you see that if you multiply i times z, you'll get your i cosine theta term and i times i is negative one and you'll get this. So this is interesting that by taking the derivative of z, it's the same as multiplying by i. Now, if you look at this result that we have here, i times z, if you go negative sine theta, this is theta here, this is still theta here, because when you rotate uh, here, if I have a perpendicular uh, relationship, then this line and this line form a right angle. This theta here will be the theta there. Notice that negative sine theta is the x-coordinate for this point that's perpendicular to this line here. And if you go i cosine theta, that gives you the height up there. In other words, by multiplying by i with some arbitrary z, we rotate to the left by 90 degrees. And from our military group, we kind of know that's the case, right? Multiplying by i means left face. And look, it worked even here when we started from some angle, left face. Now you know, if a derivative of something is equal to i times that something, we can write solve that differential equation as follows. z is equal to e to the i theta. If we check it, we take the derivative with respect to theta, we will uh, then have the i pop down, and e i theta is z, so it works. It checks out. And that means we have this marvelous relationship called the Euler formula, which Feynman referred to as our jewel, e to the i theta is equal to, to the cosine of theta plus i sine of theta.